In a process, the language that's really important is what's not shown, actually. So the verbs are important. Um, quite often in a process, they don't show you the verbs. So we see here on this picture lots of nouns that are talking about all the things that are in the process, but they're not mentioning verbs. So that means you are going to have to consider what verb to use. Sometimes we can use the noun to give us a clue for the verb. So for example, with the word mold there, we could say the bricks are molded and they're drying up. And we could use that verb from there. Uh, we could say dry. Okay, and packaging, we can make it into a verb by using package. So you can do that, but sometimes you're going to need other um, verbs as well. So have a look here and we'll pause once more and think what may, might, sorry, excuse me, what may be under these brown boxes. Now here's another activity for you. Uh, this looks a bit tricky. I guess it is a wee bit tricky. So the, these are all the verbs. So now you can choose which verb you think should go in which spot. So notice here also that then it's not just single verbs, they're using verb phrases sometimes used to break up. That's an example of really high level um, lexical resource. So it's not just synonyms as people think, it's using um, combinations of words and lexical chunks to get a higher mark. So there's where they are, so you can see. So pause again there and you have a look yourself and check how good you were at, uh, well, how accurate you were at placing those words in the right spot. So now let's move on to a diagram. Um, this time we're going to look at mistakes again. So this time as we go through it, have a look at the mistakes that the candidate may be using. Again, there's one um, highlighted for you there. So the blue is the good and the red is the bad. Can you see any other inaccurate word choices they're making where the word choice is not, it's confusing to the reader or just not accurate? So now we see it coming in here. Um, this is very typical of student writing where they're trying to do it. They're close, but they're not being precise and accurate. So we can understand most of these words. So for example, pull and made much bigger or longer circle. Those words, for example, we do understand what they mean, uh, but it's not accurate. So to be accurate, you need to be specific and precise with your word choice. So the blue ones are much more precise. Um, Again, um, words like planned at the end, there would be a good word choice. Okay, and notice that last one there is planned is a good example of this person obviously knows they can use um, the, a present tense for the future if we use the right vocab, which is plan. So plan is an interesting verb in English, um, or estimate as well that we can use for the future, is estimated or is planned to increase we can say as well in this situation is, is planned to be made. Now also we've got prepositions of place. This is a vocab that you quite often need in a diagram and maybe not anything else in um, task one writing. So we've got opposite highlighted there. Can you see examples of other forms or other prepositions of place? And here they are. On the other side of, next to, between. So you need those prepositions of place. That's pretty specific vocab for a diagram. So let's do a quick review now of what we've discussed today. Um, we talked about a line graph first. Um, and when you see the things in red, they're the mistakes that we focused on. And then the blue was when we were searching for good examples. So we looked at word form errors and we described time change. Now there is a video available, as I said before, on um, the YouTube channel, the IELTS Steve YouTube channel, to check that out as well. Um, bar charts, we looked at compare and contrast, and we looked at two things here, and adverbs like roughly, and how they were helpful. Um, and then in pie charts, we looked very briefly at repetition, and in the blue there is what you should do. So to avoid repetition, we can use synonyms, or we can use different word forms. 
and the table. We looked at three things actually. We looked at trend language, then we looked at range language, and finally we looked at using buy and to. Good examples of how a candidate, a high level candidate, would use that. We've got a video on YouTube of that as well. That's the buy and to video there. Um, now, in terms of a process, we looked at verb forms. Um, that this is a specific thing that might come up in um, processes. Processes and diagrams are slightly different to the other four because the language you need is different as well. They look different and how you write about them is also different. So in terms of the uh, diagram for the last one, we looked at inaccurate word choice and then the mistakes that people were making with that or the candidate was making. And then we looked at some prepositions of place. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. Um, what you can do, of course, is, as we said before, go back and look for those things in the other uh, writing sample. So if you like to thinking about describing time change, you could look at the table for that as well, or the bar chart. Um, compare and contrast was used in almost all of these samples. So you could look at that language everywhere. Um, in the diagram, for example, was comparing different times. So that's quite good language to look at there as well. Um, trend language that we focused on in tables was true for um, all of the tasks. So you can look at that as well. Mm -hmm.